Hello, my name is Evgeny Niretin. I am head of department of aircraft system design of Moscow Aviation Institute, and I would like to introduce you master's degree program avionics system design. The master's, uh, the master's program is two years education in 703 department of Moscow Aviation Institute and Northwestern Polytechnic University. The education is in English language. The first year of education is in China, Xi'an City, Northwestern Polytechnic University. And the second year of education is in Moscow Aviation Institute, Moscow, Russia. So after this education, you will have two diplomas, Russian diploma of MAI and Chinese diploma of NPU. Where could you work next? After education, you can work in Coma Corporation in China or in United Aircraft Corporation in Russia on the future project CR929. It's new Russian long-range aircraft. The main topics for examination are avionics systems, avionics architecture paradigms, stage gate process model in aviation project management, avionics validation and verification objectives and stages, tools for avionics design automation, test benches tests for avionics, and introduction in fun fundamental air navigation concepts. The examples of exam questions you can find on this slide. For example, what is avionics, example of the systems? What is the difference between federative and integrated model avionics? Avionics functionality evaluation, distributed integral model avionics, stage gate process, the main steps, validation, verification, and certification, the key points, the tools for avionics design, test benches, the main types, what is the difference between e bird or an iron bird, and what is the system integrated bench and e bird Now let's speak step by step of every topic of our examination. Avionics, what is it? It is aviation and electronics. So every uh, electronic unit inside the boat. The main functions of avionics are communications, for example, radio and satellite communication, navigation, for example, landing system and flight management system, indication, flight control, and surveillance systems. Avionics began in 1960s, for example, Boeing 747. The main technologies are six-pack instruments, analog communications, and standalone systems. Next, in 1970s, uh, IRS implemented analog to digital communications began. So you can find that more and more electrical units inside the cabin crew you can find on the slide. In 1980s, FMS implemented. So now we have only two pilots inside the aircraft and no board engineer. Avionics evaluation in 1990s. It's, for example, new Airbus A320. New features is digital fly-by-wire with side sticks, liquid crystal displays, and more and more avionic functions. What about 2000s? Uh, new Airbus A380 uh, with new features such as IMA platform, keyboard and trackball, and more new aviation functions. Avionics today is integrated model avionics platform and additional AMA functions inside the main processors and liquid crystal displays. What should be in the future, tomorrow? For example, new, new air aircraft Gulfstream G500 with touch panel screens, wireless communication and a number of new functions. So, we can find on this slide the avionics functionality evolution. How many functions do we have now and how complicated is avionics? And only few functions in the beginning. So firstly, it was manual flight in 1950s. In 1970s, we uh, began a new uh, functions such as autopilot. In 1980s, 1990s is analog electronics, so analog avionics is began. 
uh, and mixed functions of digital and analog devices. In 2000, uh, digital avionics with the cockpit began in new aircrafts, and nowadays we don't have separate devices. We have integrated functions in our avionics complexes. On this slide, you could find the um, typical diagram of avionics with radio communication, sensor processors, liquid crystal displays, and safety systems. So, it is the typical diagram of today avionics. The next, is, the next topic is avionics architecture paradigms. Today, we have four main types of architectures. It is traditional federated architecture, integrated federated architecture, integrated modern avionics, and distributed integrated modern avionics. Federative uh, architecture. We have so many computers as so many systems we have. So every system has its own computer with its own sensors and actuators. It is very simple to design, but it is very complicated to modernize it. So if you will add, for example, one new function, it will be really complicated for you to make certification process from the beginning for this system and whole aircraft. Integrated federated architecture <coughs> is the next step of design evolution and we combine the functions of several systems on one computer. What is integrated? You can find on this slide that we have complicated computer with different applica uh, software applications which can solve the tasks of different system. So now we don't need the number of computers we can have only one. A number of uh, complicated computers which uh, have communication between each other with FDX network and applications on it uh, can solve the big number of different tasks of all the systems of the aircraft. You can find here that <coughs> you can find on this slide that, for example, four computers uh, have uh, connected to each other with FDX switches, and on every computer we have a number of integrated model uh, aviation uh, functions, its applications, uh, which can work separately in every computer, then to compare the results and to make the commands for control system, for example. Typical diagram or typical scheme of IMA platform you can find on this slide. Distributed IMA, what is it? It is the new uh, variant of system integration where you have a number of computers in different parts of uh, aircraft. That's why we don't need to combine all the functions to one processor, but we separate these functions between computers inside the aircraft. And for example, if one of computers will be broken, another computer can solve the tasks of the died one. The next topic is state-gate process model in aviation project management. We have seven main phases in the development process. Phase, phase zero is pre-analysis, where we can even imagine that we want to create a new aircraft. Phase one is analysis. Now we should understand what type of aircraft should we design, for what functions do we need it, and what number of uh, systems, for example, we, do we need on this aircraft. On the next phase, phase number two, we should make the concept of our aircraft and to find uh, our airframe. In phase three, 
conceptual design, we should know the real uh, concept of our aircraft, uh, the systems which should we design, the companies who will help us to do it, and the next phase, the, uh, phase number four, detailed design. On this stage, we should create all the necessary documentation and to make real contracts with airliners. Phase five, uh, detailed design, final application. So, in this step, we should freeze all the documents to test all the functions of our systems and to make a new phase, phase number six, first flight. So, when we checked all the functions of our aircraft on the test benches, next on the ground tests, we can start a number of first flights. And the last phase is certification. Certification process should prove that all the functions are safety and we can use our airliner for the civil aircraft. And during our design process, all the time we should make different types of design review. On this diagram, on this slide, you will find the typical process of the design with critical design reviews, detailed design reviews, final acceptance review, major design review, and others. The next topic is avionics validation, verification, objectives, and stages. For this topic, you should know the main uh, verification and validation rules and regulators documents, such as RP 4754A, RP 4761, DO 297, DO 178C, and DO 254A. These five documents are the main one in our design process of avionics systems. What is validation? Validation is the process which can help us the determination that uh, the requirements for a product are correct and complete. So you should know what would you like to design that the requirement is complete and you can realize it. Verification process. The evaluation of an implementation of requirements to determine that they have been met. So you should test that you made a design of your aircraft systems or whole aircraft, for example, and you realized all re uh, requirements which you have. So you should be absolutely sure, first of all, that everything works correctly. And secondly, you realized all requirements. Certification process. It is activities on showing compliance of the object of certification to be defined requirements. So you will uh, show to aviation authorities that all requirements are realized and realized correctly. The next topic is tools for avionics design automation. The most popular software complexes for design are MATLAB Simulink, I think you can find it uh, during your education process at school. MLS, uh, LMS Imaging Lab MSCM, NC Skate, Unigraphics NX, IBM Rational Doors, IBM Rational Clear Quest, and IBM Rational Clear Quest. Next topic is test benches tests for avionics. The main Test benches are logic integration bench, functional integration bench, avionics core integration bench, system integration bench, electronic bird, iron bird, and our future aircraft. So on every step of our design, for every level we will have uh, realize or to design uh, special test benches for every function. For example, 
for subsystem level or for unit level, we need to make functional integration branches for every device, for every computer, which we will realize our functions. On the system level, we should have system integration branch where we can test the system functions, subsystem functions, and or both complexes functions. And in integral level, we have our aircraft prototype and two test branches, electronic build, e build, and iron build, i build. First of all, we should understand that all requirements are correct. How should we test it? On the logic integration bench. So we have imitation complex and a number of models which are already tested, so they work correctly. And our model under test, where we should know uh, if it works correct or not, we can change something, for example, and after test is complete and we understood that all requirements are uh, correct, we can start the development process. After development, we should test everything. So, the leap tasks is only logic tests. We realize the logic now during design of software. When we will realize our software for hardware computers, we need to test it on the functional integration benches. So it is our imitation complex and unit under test, your computer. The tasks for functional integration bench are logic tests and unit tests. The next step is a Vionics core integration bench. So we should understand that all our computers of Avionics complexes can work together and to realize all Avionics functions. So all the computers will be units under test, will work together in one complex. So when we will be absolutely sure that all the tasks of Avionics are solved, we can now to go to the system integration bench. But Avionics core integration bench tasks are logic tests, unit tests, and systems test is Avionics system tests. System integration bench. It is big complex of equipment with a lot of uh, emulators uh, of different signals, such as discrete signals, uh, airing digital signals, and analog sensors emulators, real aircraft systems, and our systems, which will be system under test. So we can make the tests of one system or a number of systems all together. The SIP tasks are logic tests, unit tests, system tests, and aircraft systems tests. The next step is to make verification process on electronic build. So what is it? On this slide, you can find the green one is avionic systems, the blue one is hydraulic systems, the yellow one is fuel system, and the red one is engines. So on our electronic beyond, we can uh, have real systems except engines, fuel, and hydraulic. So these three types of the system will be simulated. The IBO tasks are everything except full aircraft system tests. And the test which was made on electronic build, you can use during certification process. And the last one is iron build. All the systems are real except engines. Engines we can start, of course, only outside the factory on the real aircraft. All other functions we can test on iron bird. So the iBird tasks is all the tests for our aircraft. The next topic is fundamental air navigation concepts. You should know that the main companies which uh, realize the 
documents for this are ICAO, Cesar concept, and NextGen. So you should find in the internet information about this, especially ICAO Global Air Navigation Plan. And of course, you will answer the questions of our exam. And recommended reference for you. On this slide, you can find the main books which can help you to answer all the questions of our examination. And all of them you can find in the internet for free. Welcome to our master's degree program, Avionics System Design. Thank you very much.